Dude, I got to say something about this Kushida versus Santos Escobar match for the Cruiserweight title. Well, good. That's where we are. Yes, I thought this match was a, a really good match. I thought this was a very good main event. And they kicked out MSK. Well, first, Legato Del Fantasma tried to interfere. MSK hey, flew out of the stands to make That the happened same. within 30 seconds. They, they all got no ejected. Time. And yeah. so it was a fair one-on-one best of three falls match. Yes. So I watched the match, and Santos hits the phantom driver out of nowhere for the first fall. It's not, uh, which was yeah. weird because Escobar worked him over forever. And finally, Escobar goes for a middle rope Frankensteiner. Kushida rolls through a new cradle. I thought for sure that's the first fall. Perfect finish. He kicks out. And then, literally out of nowhere, he just grabs the guy and hits a phantom driver and gets the pin. If this had been a one-fall match, Santos Escobar would have scored a dominant victory to regain his Cruiserweight title. It was weird. It was very weird. And then... They're Kushida. about yes. They're about to have NXT rolls on. Yes, they're they're literally saying NXT rolls on, but suddenly Kushida puts an armbar in. They start screaming, "No, don't go to the break, truck!" And so the truck doesn't go to break, and sure enough, Santos submits. It's one on one, and then they do the third fall, and you could talk about it. But anyway, he hits the fisherman hammerlock suplex for the pin, and I love that move. Best move of 2021, in my opinion. I'm voting for it in the Observer Awards. Mm-hmm. I love it. It's unbreakable. Like, Santos is just like, there's no way he could escape and he's pinned. So here's what I want to say about the whole match as a whole. I thought it was very good, okay? But when it was over, I thought what I always think, which is that if they would have had this match in any other promotion in the world, it would have been better, mm. okay? that's I always think that, especially on Raw and SmackDown. But then I got thinking and I was like, why would this match be better anywhere else? It wasn't like they were restricted from doing anything. It wasn't like there was interference and distraction in WWE tropes. They had three falls with no interference, great wrestling, big moves. Why did I autom- why did I automatically think if this match would have been wrestled anywhere else in the world it would have been better? And you know what I concluded? Because of the way that they shoot these fucking matches. Because of the cuts, and because of the zooming, and because of all of those things that you see, the way they shoot matches in WWE, that's unlike how they shoot matches anywhere else in the world. You gotta be facing the hard cam. All of this shit, it really hit me that, like, that's the thing that really irritates me when I watch some of these matches. When I watch a Cesaro match, and I'm like, man, if Cesaro had that match in Ring of Honor, it would be better. I don't even know if it would be better move for move, but it would be better because of the way that they shot it. So anyway, one of these days, hopefully, when we no longer have to shoot matches like this, because this fucking Kevin Dunn is is up the river, like, I hope that we can just shoot it like a sport again, Yeah. and all of these matches will be better. That would help. That would help. So this was a title match, and that with like like all title matches, that means we get intangibles. Santos Escobar, they had three intangibles for this match. The one only had two. Maybe it's because it's two out of three falls. Santos's intangibles are natural born leader, ring IQ, and lucha. Kashida's intangibles are technician, ring IQ, and precision. Hmm. Yes, they both had ring IQ list. In this two out of three falls match, they had a scoreboard. Even though the only possible scores you can have before the match is over are zero and one. That's too much to keep track of. I'm laughing about this. The fact is, it's okay to have a... You, you, if you did turn on in the middle of the match, and you know it's two out of three falls, you see what the score is. It's, fine. it's not a bad thing they're doing, but it made me laugh. Uh, the match itself, Santos kicks his ass and just wins the first fall. He t- takes 90% of the first fall, hits his move, and wins. There's also a weird bit where... I'm watching this in uh, the living room. My wife's in the kitchen with the windows open. It was a warm day. And as Santa's is working him over in the corner, I hear a weird whistle. I thought it was a video she was watching or a bird outside or something. And then she, my wife says, what was that? I said, I thought it was you. And I rewind to check. And the whistle is coming from this match. And I thought someone in the crowd whistled at Santa's Cisco bar. But then, like a minute later, he does something else in the corner. I hear the same whistle again. I think he's doing it. He's starting to do the strange whistle as part of his offense now. All right, whatever. 
So Santos wins a squash match in the first fall. He loses the second fall in 30 seconds. And then they have the third fall. It is one where you could ask, would this have been better if they just did a one fall match? And the answer is probably. They just did a two out of three falls match. Actually, I, I forget where they talked about it. They did a two out of three falls match and claimed this is the signature match of NXT. And then listed exactly two examples of why. Like Sami Zayn and Cesaro, I think, was one. And Adam Cole and Johnny Gargano was the other. But they're doing the third fall. It's excellent wrestling. Mostly Kushida taking the arm apart for a long time, actually. And uh, he does the hammerlock brain buster into the corner, essentially. And then the hammerlock suplex in the ring. And Santos is down. It was, there was no kick out at three and a half. If this career counted at ten, Santos would have been down for all ten counts. So Kushida wins. Very good TV main event. I'm a little bit confused by the booking they are doing here. Considering there's a takeover coming up. It felt like they rushed to get to Mercedes and Raquel. This was a rematch that felt very rushed. They're doing a rushed rematch of Finn Balor and Karrion Cross, And I have no idea what it's all going to lead to a takeover. So I don't know where they're going with it. That aside, I thought this was the best NXT in weeks, maybe months. I thought this was a very, very, very fun show. I liked it. That was a very good show as well. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the Join button, sign up today. You can also click Subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.